All right, I first heard about this one a few weeks ago on the Truth is Stranger Than Fiction channel, Asgardia Rising, the new Space Kingdom. Asgardia is a united supranational space state open to all people on Earth. Asgardia will possess a space fleet to defend humanity and planet Earth from threats emanating from outer space. It will open its embassies on all continents. We are not the best, but we are the future. I hug each and every one of you. One humanity, one unity. At first, when I saw the whole ridiculousness of this and, and taking this new made-up ad hoc nation seriously, I thought I was going to make a bunch of jokes about ass guardians, but then I realized this is not a joke. This is very, very serious. The solemn oath of the head of the first space nation is sworn to the head of parliament, Mr. Lambic Opic. Today, as I accede to the position as the head of nation of the space kingdom of Asgardia, I solemnly swear to be faithful to the spirit and the letter of the Constitution of Asgardia and to be the guarantor of its observance. The head of justice lays the sign of the head of nation on the shoulders of Igor Ashur Bailey. <laughs> he can't even put the necklace on right. Um, this is a quote-unquote... Space Kingdom. It's the world's first official space nation, and they've been endorsed by the ISS, who put on a whole display. They showed their paraphernalia. They have written a constitution. They have all their logos and symbolism in place. They have placed their hand on the constitution and sworn to it. They've convened in Vienna. They've had people sing the anthem and the pledge. The national anthem of Asgardia is played. All please rise. they have put on the fancy medallion necklace in a very, very official manner. No, no, not like that. Yes, thank you. And this bow tie man, Igor Asher Beely, is this billionaire who set up his own space nation just by spending enough money on it. And apparently he was born in Azerbaijan, he's lived in the Soviet Union, and uh, he's been involved with science and engineering for most of his life, and he's got all kinds of connections to the United Nations. He was part of the ECOSOC, United Nations Economic and Social Council. He's won Russia's State Science and Technology Prize. But what he's done here has really just outstripped everything. In fact, this puts the stuff going on in Estonia that we covered in the previous video to shame. I mean, they've actually really got this going. They've got a a whole cult of space backing this thing. This guy Igor Asher Beely is the first head of state of Asgardia, the first ever space nation. The solemn speech of the head of the first space nation of Asgardia in the history of mankind, Igor Asher Beely, is being given. Asgardians, this day will certainly be, be recorded in the annals of the greatest events in the history of humankind. And with the help of NASA, and I'm sure U.S. taxpayer dollars, and other international space cooperation, they have now officially launched a satellite into lower Earth orbit, 
where are they going to store digital information, and where they now have their first official space territory. And they're also expanding space ter- territories throughout terrestrial Earth, both on the water and the land, and they have future plans for manned space platforms, space arcs to promote and preserve biodiversity. Space arcs will be deployed, providing permanent resistance to humans in outer space, uh, in environment or of uh, artificial gravity, and protection from space radiation, thus uh, enabling human reproduction. For moon colonies, satellites will orbit the moon and stationary settlements will be established on both the moon's orbit and its surface. And beyond, they're going to go to the stars because they are Asgardia. Just 20 months have passed since the announcement was made of the creation of Asgardia. Now there are some 200,000 Asgardians in more than 200 countries of the world. We have our own territory on the Asgardia 1 satellite. What exactly are you up to here, Drax? Moonraker 1, lift off. I can therefore declare with confidence that Asgardia, the first space nation of the United Humankind, has been born. But after I got over just simply being stunned by the fact that a space kingdom had been launched and announced and there was this new space nation that was going to have space people and even space money, well, I I just felt behind the times because I just hadn't heard about it and it passed me by. But then Melissa and I looked up the space constitution of the space kingdom of Asgardia and I was just really floored by the whole thing. And to be fair, they do express some good ideas, but if you really dig into this, you'll see that this is not the path to the future that preserves individual rights, and (laughs) it is in fact a space kingdom that is based around a technocracy. Asgardia will build an infrastructure that is independent from ground-based systems on Earth. Asgardians will carry handheld devices with integrated passports, credit cards, and conventional smartphones. And a government dedicated not to the rights of individuals, but to the common, even though they do state that there are individual rights. So they start out with a preamble, and I'm obviously not going to go through the whole thing, but I am going to hit some highlights here. We the people of planet Earth, irrespective of our place of birth, residence, language, gender, race, nationality, religion, or citizenship of the existing Earth states, use our free choice, will and conviction, and the desire to unite future humanity as trans-ethnic, transnational, trans-religious, ethical, fair, peaceful, looking into the infinite universe based on equality and dignity of every human being to resolve differences, conflicts, inequality, and imperfections in human history. They're going to fix human history, bringing spiritual and scientific practices and human creative achievements to a new level that is the level of space to launch a new era in the history of space humanity. And they're allowing anyone currently residing on Earth to become a citizen of Asgardia as long as you assent to the Declaration and swear to the Constitution and the laws of Asgardia. And they've actually got people who have set up their citizenships, they've proved their identity, they've got their accounts approved, very much like the e-residents of Estonia. And they're now able to upload uh, digital profiles, store media on this space platform and satellite that's carrying uh, various types of computer servers, but they must swear to the conditions of the Declaration and Constitution of the Space Kingdom of Asgardia. And there's apparently more than 300,000 some odd space citizens already. And I wonder how many of them have read this Constitution or really thought about it. They talk a good game saying that we the people of Asgardia will do everything for the prosperity of our new space nation created by us, safeguarding our motherland, planet Earth, the development of the entire humankind in space. We are not the best, we are the future. One humanity, one unity. One humanity, one unity. The prime document for the creation of the space nation. So one billionaire can create one humanity and one unity with one space nation. And then if there's another billionaire, maybe someone with the title of Count, for instance, there could be two humanity, two unity. 
And so in the articles, you learn that Asgardia is the first independent, free, unitary, and social space nation based on morality, fairness, and peace. Whose morality, whose fairness, and whose peace? Well, they come from Asgardia's supreme values, which are established under the space kingdom of Asgardia. And the first question everyone should be asking is, if Asgardia is a space kingdom, then who is the monarch there? Who is king? Well, if you go through the document, you never learn the answer to that question. And if you go to Asgardia's Space Kingdom Frequently Asked Questions, you see they talk about why did Asgardia decide to become a constitutional monarchy, a space kingdom of Asgardia, why not a democracy? Well, they never directly answer that question, but they say to be clear, Asgardia is a democracy, Really, that does not answer the question, why is it a space kingdom and who is the space king? Well, you learn that in the space kingdom, some of the greatest democracies in the world are monarchies, and they named the UK, Liechtenstein, the Netherlands, Sweden, and etc. It's a perceptional misconception that a constitutional monarchy is a bad thing. The Netherlands is a constitutional monarchy, and yet the most liberal country in the world, setting humanistic trends not only for Europe, but the entire world. And they basically modeled their governance in space off of the Netherlands. But at the same time, history does show that no society is perfect, and therefore Asgardia is conceived to be a new form of society, not just a regular monarchy like the great ones in Europe, but a space monarchy. Fear the future. But again, who is the monarch in Asgardia, the space kingdom? I, I just raised the question because it simply isn't answered here. Who could it be? Hmm. Could it be Because we know it's not the founder, Igor Asher Bealy. He paid for it, he set it up, but he's only the head of state for a temporary reign. I mean, after all, when you read through Asgardia, is clearly a technocracy. I want to underscore that Asgardia is a truly avant-garde technocratic and futuristic state, but we call it Space Kingdom. And if they don't tell you who the monarch is, I'd say your best guess is that the monarch is right here on screen. Someone very trustworthy, someone very reliable, someone who's never made a mistake. No 9000 computer has ever made a mistake or distorted information. We are all, by any practical definition of the words, foolproof and incapable of error. I dare say that the king, if not the god of Asgardia, is AI itself. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon. <laughs> then work out. I'm sorry, Dave. I mean, you learn right here in Article 4, the supreme values of Asgardia shall be the common and permanent foundations of the self-identification of Asgardian citizens and whose absolute supreme value is, quote, humanity striving into the infinite future, the infinite universe, and infinite new universes, because it is a space kingdom. And they plan to establish peace in space and permanent settlement in the universe, mm -hmm. space guarding humanity from space originating threats, the unity of space humanity as a community. They plan to fulfill their mission for human dignity, human rights, and freedoms, and the harmonious development of individuals. I have each and every one of you. The supreme values will fulfill the mission for the supremacy of Asgardian's laws. It seems a little self-reflexive. And the preservation of space environment and the community and mutual support. It's getting kind of repetitive. And scientific and artistic creativity. Okay. And belief in the boundless potential of human reason. Do not ever stop believing. Not to mention labor, knowledge, and progress. Also, peace, tranquility, safety, security, respect, and confidence are all nice-sounding buzzwords to throw in on a line K. And if you didn't get enough of those words, throw in morality, fairness, and freedom. And it is, of course, prohibited to undermine or even to diminish these supreme values of Asgardia. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> But from a legal perspective, of course, no one is going to space. No! 
Although they could talk a great game about Werner von Braun style space colonies and space platforms and space circles and spaceships and space wheels, Asgardia's territory is, apart from its satellite, really only in one space territory and one space territory only, and that is cyberspace. It is a digital nation with living citizens on the planet Earth, implemented from a scientific and technological perspective from its low Earth orbit satellite. So again, all these hundreds of thousands of people signing up to protect the supreme values and the overarching absolute supreme value of Asgardia are doing so as digital citizens. Now, here's an important point. Let's get into Article 8, the rights and freedoms of space citizens of Asgardia. The population of Asgardia will grow to comprise 2% of the most creative individuals on Earth which is equivalent uh, to approximately 150 million people, making Asgardia one of the 12 largest countries in terms of population and one of the top 12 economies on Earth. All human and citizenship rights and freedoms shall be recognized in Asgardia in accordance with blah, 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 blah. And all Asgardian citizens shall be equal, but some shall be more equal than others. Persons who acquire space citizenship at birth can exercise their rights and shall perform all obligations on reaching full legal age at 18. Number four, key rights and freedoms of Asgardian citizenships. Freedom of individual. Freedom of speech. Well, that would be important, wouldn't it? I hope nothing stands in the way of that. The right to participation in national affairs of Asgardia, both directly and via representatives. They talk all about their um, digital elections. Why not? The right to elect and elect appointed Asgardian governmental bodies, participate in referenda. The right to introduce legislative proposals. The right to access information about the activities of government bodies and monitor them. Okay. The right to participate in space exploration and universal access to science information about space. That sounds like it would be nice. The right to personal safety and the safety of home in Asgardia locations. Notice you don't have the right to bear arms. You don't have the right to self-defense, but you have the right to personal safety and safety of home. Guess who will protect and institute that right? I'm sure you can guess it would be the Space Kingdom. Now, uh, they do claim that on top of free freedom of speech, that there is a right to citizens self-governance. You have the power of self-governance here, as long as nothing else in this contract negates that. The right to ownership and inheritance, that's nice. The right to organize citizen groups on the basis of Asgardian laws. But, number nine, citizen rights and freedoms may only be restricted. That's a little bit of a step down from shall not infringe, and government may not, and government may not impinge, etc. Citizen rights and freedoms, since they're not absolute, they're not the absolute supreme value, they may only be restricted by Asgardian laws to the extent authorized by the Asgardian Constitution, required to protect Asgardia's national interest and safety, security, performance of mission. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. And supreme values and or to protect the rights and legal interest of other Asgardian citizens. A bit of an asterisk there. And so it's good to know that if you're a space kingdom, space citizen, you do have the freedom of individual, um, freedom of speech, right to personal safety and safety of home, among other rights. However, they may be restricted under a few certain conditional clauses. Space citizens in Asgardia do have indispensable and inalienable obligations, which shall not violate the rights and freedoms. Among those include the requirement to pay taxes, but you pay voluntarily established taxes, not just any taxes. You have to pay them. That's an obligation that's inalienable. It's not your rights that are inalienable, because that's Clause 9, may only be restricted if, but what is inalienable and indispensable are the obligations, among them the requirement to pay the voluntary tax. So that's, that's pretty good, I guess. You have the right, but also the obligation to participate in elections and referenda, and there may be consequences if you don't. And you also have the obligation to preserve nature and environment, in all of Asgardia's locations. 
and Asgardian citizens also have an obligation towards the national interest and security and performing its mission, and of course the supreme values above which is the absolute supreme value for moving into the infinity. It is an obligation, which again is inalienable and indispensable, that Asgardian citizens shall make a contribution to the creation of Asgardia's resources to ensure the common good. Once again, your your human rights, your personal rights, your right to individual, your right to free speech, those are not inalienable, but the uh, contribution to the resources to ensure the common good, that is a required obligation, of course. And the failure to perform, blah, 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 you could have your citizenship revoked, there could be fines and restrictions. I mean, I will say this is good. There's no death penalty in Asgardia. Hey, there's a few attractive ideas in here for sure, but you've got to read those contracts. So the government is responsible for implementing and protecting citizens' rights and freedoms, but they may be restricted under certain clauses and conditions. At any rate, and I thought this was interesting, Article 10, Number 6, the government shall establish its public opinion and take the same into account when making administrative decisions in accordance with Asgardia's laws. Of course, I couldn't finish that without laughing. I guess if I understand this properly, it will take into account public opinion when making administrative decisions, because they care what people think, but (laughs) the government shall establish its own public opinion. The government shall establish its public opinion. When you get into chapter 4 and article 11, they get into human resources, which is just the world's greatest euphemism for eugenics and for using you as a data slave, a resource of information as they track and spy on you. Asgardia shall encourage the development of human resources, quote unquote. Asgardian citizens have a guaranteed right to free time for self-development and self-improvement, creative and cultural pursuits. That sounds pretty nice. You, as a human resource under Article 11, if you sign up and approve this constitution so you can upload your digital crap to their satellite, as a human resource, as a piece of data that is worth a certain dollar amount to them, Asgardia shall support its citizens in leading healthy lifestyles. Right. Let's see which one of us can touch his toes. (laughs) You think soda taxes are bad. Just wait till Asgardia and its space kingdom and all its citizens here on Earth leads the way on healthy lifestyles. I don't know. Asgardia's natural resources include, of course, not only material objects, energy, but also information streams, data, in space environments, in the universe, in Asgardian territory, and adjacent environments. And Asgardia's natural resources, including information streams, may be exclusively its governmental property, the property of its companies, public-private property, private property, personal property, as well as other property under their laws. And they shall use all of these available resources, including information streams, to ensure the safety and sustainability of of its natural resources, including information streams. Pretty much a blank check for tracking, tracing, spying, and the rest of it. Or maybe you read it different. Hey, it's your space environment too. But that is not all. Where it really starts to get interesting is Article 13, Financial Resources. I'm not making this up. I'm just reading from the Space Constitution. As Guardia's currency shall be a monetary unit named SOLAR. Solar shall be issued by the National Bank of Asgardia in the amount tied to the parameters of the moon, the sun, and other celestial bodies set by a special law of Asgardia. Your money system isn't just fiat. It isn't just made up out of thin air. It's space money tied to the parameters of the moon, the sun, and other celestial bodies. And and number nine... Asgardia shall recognize the immunity of commercial secrets and bank secrecy right in the Constitution. Go ahead and sign your name on the dotted line. Become a Space Kingdom citizen today. Your solars are not only tied to the free market in accordance with the moon, sun, and other celestial bodies, 
but they have protected immunity for commercial and bank secrecy. And the government's a lender of last resort. Just wait till they have a financial crash up there. That'll be lots of fun. But it's backed up, of course, by Article 39, where they go into more detail on the National Bank of Asgardia, who set up the exchange rate, the emission, the financial circulation, the stability, and the liquidity of the system, and furthermore, support the development of the banking network of the national and private banks, regulate the conditions and profitability of their financial activities, banking secret, not banking secrets, plural, banking secret shall be guaranteed by the government. Banking secret may be limited by Asgardia's laws or an international agreement. That's if you know anything about it at all, because of course, banking secret is secret. Seriously, you can spend solar, you can collect solar, you can admire solar from a distance, but you can't change the parameters of the moon, the sun, or of the banking secret. That's not allowed under the Asgardia system. And as they point out, as everyone uploads to this space server, they will accumulate intellectual resources by digitalizing and storing the wealth of human knowledge in space, which will be stored in a data bank in low Earth orbit, which also includes biological materials from Earth. This is, in essence, the whole crux of the Asgardia system. It's an untouchable, secret data bank of flowing information resources the constituents of whom have signed off on basically all of their rights and allowed it to be one big banking secret. It's a similar deal for property in Asgardia. They do ensure and guarantee the rights and freedoms of citizens, their security, wealth, property, and development, so long as it shall serve the achievement of the common good. Asgardia shall recognize exclusive, inalienable government property used for national needs, not just any government property, but governmental property that constitutes the wealth, I guess the entire wealth, of Asgardian citizens used for the common good. A place where there is no pain or hatred, just love and joy. Isn't it beautiful? Private property, personal property, and mixed forms of property. Pretty big blank check. And this common good property includes information and intellectual property as well. Restrictions on property rights, since rights in Asgardia float around in a zero-gravity atmosphere even as its citizens stay firmly on the ground of Earth, these restrictions on property rights, as well as the procedure for circulation and disposal of property, are set by Asgardia's laws. So they have a social justice government by the people, but of course it is a space kingdom with various powers over it and very flexible rights. But it's worth pointing out that Asgardia has no place for political parties. In fact, not only is there no place for political parties in this social justice space kingdom, there is also no place for the history of earthly conflicts in Asgardia. And this is key, folks. Asgardia creates a new, peaceful history of the future space humankind. By uniting in Asgardia, the progressive part of humanity can offer the whole civilization on Earth an alternative by replacing geopolitics with space politics. An alternative by replacing geopolitics with space politics. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response, were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. And thereby open up a path to a new spiral of development. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. By banning human earthly conflicts and their sordid history just because they're in space. Prejudice during elections and referenda based on country of birth, residence, citizenship, race, nationality, gender, religion, language, wealth, and any other attribute is forbidden. Now, that sounds nice. I'm no fan of prejudice. It's obviously ugly. It's wrong. But it's also incredibly easy to use to restrict free speech. Not that they know anything about that. So they're going to ensure fairness through equal rights and equality of human dignity and the spread of moral ideals. Now, that becomes interesting here. Well, it's covered in part in Article 18, Equality of Dignity for All. The views of people and Asgardian citizens about human dignity shall be formed and fostered through education, parenting, propaganda, and the media in accordance with Asgardia's supreme values. So they are going to tell you 
what your views on human dignity shall be. That way they can be recognized equally and protected based on what they tell you through propaganda and the media. And just in case you had any further notions of free speech, you may also not, despite your freedom of speech, you may also not have any propaganda of a moral or antisocial behavior. You cannot have the production or circulation of any information on any storage media which contains mass information that is harmful to morality or aims to undermine or diminish its supreme values. Who have free speech so long as it's nothing immoral or inflammatory or offensive or against quote-unquote national security or promoting quote violence and strife and and do not demean anyone's honor with your free speech don't call anything into question we want floor of congress rules where you can't even talk bad about another member of congress or of course any space citizens of asgardia I mean, are you hearing this stuff? One more thing about free speech, too. There are national symbols in Asgardia. Among them are the national flag of Asgardia and the national coat of arms of Asgardia, of course, reflecting the monarchy of the space kingdom of Asgardia, whoever that might be, and the national anthem of Asgardia. These symbols have been chosen, and among them is also the national motto, One Humanity, One Unity. Now, Asgardian citizens, although they do have free speech, shall respect and protect these national symbols, and any disrespect towards these Asgardian national symbols shall be subject to liability in accordance with their laws, which supposedly include free speech, and yet there shall be no disrespect for the made-up nation of Asgardia, for the made-up space kingdom, the made-up national coat of arms, the made-up national flag, or the very made-up national anthem. And there will be no taunting or laughing at the putting on of the very special medallion necklace of the head of state of Asgardia, Igor Ashavili, or whatever his name is. And of course, if there weren't enough restrictions on the kind of guaranteed rights of space citizens, the head of nation of parliament may, of course, also declare states of emergency, defense, or disaster in, according with, in accordance with their laws, under which point I'm not sure if there are any restrictions because there couldn't be a need for protecting Earth yet. Oh, the biodiversity of Earth, the protection through a space arc. I know I've heard that somewhere before. Uh, that's right. The James Bond movie Moonraker, where the villain sets up a moon colony with a, a very Noah's Ark themed uh, group of selected alpha people who are selected for their genetic superiority and they bring them on board the ship so that the villain can spread some kind of bio virus on Earth, wipe it out, and then in time repopulate it with the eugenically selected human resources that he's brought and protected upon the Earth. It's the Space Ark Space Kingdom uh, colony here plans to have the Asgardian kingdom government oversee the propagation of the human species. They're planning to have an arc in space with biological materials, a scientific technological control system uh, with all the scientists to oversee the propagation of human species and the protection of biodiversity on Earth, even of human people, in the event of any severe space threats. Have you seen Moonraker? That's all I'm going to say. And finally, I want to just point out what some of you may have already known. This name, Asgardia, wasn't just made up. It is the special place out of Norse mythology and the Norse religion where Asgard is one of the nine worlds that is home to the tribe of gods. It's basically the Mount Olympus of the Norse mythology, among whom only one of the realms of Asgard is Valhalla. Asgard is this special dominion in the tree that looks like the place in the movie The Fountain where the gods live. They're trying to have the godlike people, although right now all the Asgardian citizens are just signing away their rights, agreeing to back the Constitution, as you saw in that video, so they can upload their digital information and store their pictures and send their videos and do secret banking. Uh, but in the future... If they ever do get to space, not that any of the current citizens ever will, and they have their space colony with the protection of biodiversity and the overseeing of human reproduction, this Asgard Mount Olympus of the Gods does in fact plan to be a sort of heaven on earth, a heaven in low orbit where the godlike people are going to live. 
because first and foremost Asgardia is a reflection of humanity's beautiful and ancient dream of a divine and peaceful land in heaven. They are in fact trying to emanatize the eschaton, that is to bring about a final heaven-like stage of history. They're trying, in their own words, to erase and undo the cycle of human history of conflicts and, and whatnot, and instead bring about a sort of heaven on earth, or in this case, just above the earth and lower earth orbit, and future space arcs, space platforms, moon colonies, and other worldly entities that they plan to populate somewhere in the future. We'll give Homo sapiens an opportunity to become immortal as a species. They are not simply trying to put people into space to colonize space, to spread out amongst the stars. They are trying to reach a certain type of philosophical kingdom, <laughs> and it has nothing to do with the individual rights guaranteed by the Constitution, the very rights that people of all countries of this globe should be insisting upon as they build this future world. Instead, no one is insisting on inalienable rights. They are allowing inalienable government powers and the placing of duties of social obligations for the quote-unquote common good upon the subjects of these space kingdoms. They are after something else altogether. And I'll leave that to you to say just exactly what that is. Asgardia will achieve recognition as an independent space state by means of uh, bilateral agreements with as many states on Earth as possible and ultimately to the United Nations. But if you are thinking of joining the space colony, I strongly recommend you at least read this text for yourself. I just don't know what else to say. I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul.